Hey guys, what's up? Alicia Cross here with Alicia Cross Training. If you are new, I am a yoga instructor, a wellness coach, a personal trainer, and I have been working with clients just like you for over 18 years. Health and fitness is not my side hustle. I do this 24 seven. I like to say I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. And my mission here is to show you that you are not stuck. You can make changes in your life. And those changes that you wanna make, they start with the foundation of good health and you change your health with habits. So I help you make those habit changes in all areas of your life, nutrition, exercise, sleep, your mindset, all of the things. And today I'm talking about private yoga. And this is just something that's been on my mind recently. Um, there was a podcast that I listened to about this, so it really got my wheels turning. And so I just wanted to share with you. So if you are here, if you found me live, say hi, give me a wave so I know you're here. And whether you're watching live or you're catching this replay later, First of all, thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and you can post a question or a comment anytime and I will reply. And just make sure that you are following me on my Facebook page, Alicia Cross Training, so you always get um, notifications when I'm going live. I do this every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, and you can also get um, inspiration and recipes and learn about exercises and yoga, all the things. And um, while you're at it, follow me on Instagram, same name, Alicia Cross Training. And if you ever have a question, you want to reach out to me, you can post in the comments, post on my page, or email me anytime, alicia at aliciacrosstraining.com. Keep it the same all over so you can always find me. Okay, so I'm talking about private yoga. So private yoga meaning a one-on-one -on -one yoga session. So I teach my public yoga classes, but I also have private yoga classes. So I do corporate fitness and corporate yoga. So it's a, I'm teaching a class, it's just a private class for that company. But private yoga, in this uh, video, I'm talking about private yoga, meaning a one-on-one -on -one session with someone. Currently, I don't have any of these right now, and it's not something that I do a ton of. And one of the reasons why I don't do a ton of them is because I don't love them. And I was trying to figure out for a long time like why I don't love them or how I can start to love them. And one of the reasons why I really wondered why I didn't love them is because I'm a personal trainer. I'm, I'm used to working with people one-on-one. -on -one. When I made the switch from being a group fitness instructor, instructor to a personal trainer, it, it was a switch. It was hard to switch to working with one person. And now for so many years I've been training and teaching that I'm fine working with one person, small groups, big groups, all of the things. I actually have only a few private clients right now, one-on-one -on -one training clients. Uh, and those clients that I have, they have home gyms, so I go to their homes and train them. As far as my other clients, I have merged them into the semi-private sessions, so I've been doing more of those. So those are no more than six people, and it's personal training just with a group of people who are working on similar things. And one of the reasons why I wanted to start that was because through the training, personal training, one-on-one -on -one personal training, what I noticed was something was missing, and it was that group element that I loved so much from years of teaching fitness. We thrive in groups, and I needed to get that back into personal training. So that was where I have been going for mm, past year or more, so into these semi-private. So the majority of what I'm doing is semi-private sessions, and I do have some private clients, personal training clients, but they have home gyms, so it wouldn't make sense to bring them into the semi-private. So I keep training them in their gyms. So private yoga. Why don't I love it? Again, trying to figure that out because I'm used to working with people one-on-one. -on -one. I've been teaching yoga um, for a long time. Um, was it 12 years now? So really I have all of the things. Like I'm just trying to figure out what what is my issue that I'm having with private yoga. And so when I really kind of questioned myself and did some inquiry and some reflection. It's because a lot of people, I think, are coming for private yoga because they want to know that they're, quote unquote, doing it right. And that flies in the face of everything that I believe about yoga. So yoga is not about the poses or how you look in the poses. It's about how you feel. And again, I think being in a class, being in a group of people can contribute to that that feeling, that energy that we're going for in the practice. That's another way that we really thrive in groups is that it's that feeling that's created and you know that, you know. I think if you're at a concert with tons of screaming people, you know, it's a very different energy. Um, of, of course, yeah, you got a live band there, but it's all of the people, that energy is magnified. And so when I'm teaching a yoga class and whatever it is that, 
you know, I'm, I'm working on or that the topic that I'm talking about, it's magnified by everybody's um, energy that's in the room. And that is hard to recreate with one person. And so if that person is coming to me because they want to know if they're quote unquote doing it right, there, there is no wrong way to practice yoga. Yes, I can give you alignment cues and I can, you know, show you how a pose will work better for your body or to help you with your goal or how you can get a better stretch or how you can make this maybe not be uncomfortable. I can absolutely show you those things. However, if I'm in a one-on-one -on -one practice with you and I just keep, sh you know, correcting you, correcting you, correcting you, I'm not creating the feeling that I want you to get from yoga. So yoga is not about telling you, you know, you're doing it wrong, fix this, do it like this. It's about feeling good when you leave the room. So if it's the two of us in there and I'm just, no, do it like this, no, put this here, no, no, and obviously I don't say it like that, but it's not, that's not creating the feeling that I'm trying to create through a yoga practice. And so I feel like it comes across that way when, when we are one-on-one -on -one practicing. Because again, you're the only one there. You're the focus of my attention. And yeah, you may think that's great and you want that, but again, that just turns into me, I feel like I'm overcorrecting. Um, and I love doing that in personal training. So in a private training session, you know, you might be coming to me because your knee hurts or your back hurts, or even in the semi-privates, I know the issues that everybody has. And so I am telling you, you got to squat like this, you got to stand like this, you got to put your foot like this, because that's what we're working on. We're trying to help you correct these things so that you your body feels better. In yoga that I'm I'm coming in with a, just a different headset. I have a different I have a different hat on when we're in yoga. It's not about correcting you. So remember the poses are all made up. The poses are made up. So there's so much more happening in yoga. So then this helped me to kind of drill down a little bit more into what I would like a private yoga session to be versus what I think people are coming to me for. Um, the way I kind of look at it is I could compare it to like a class in school versus getting like one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Same thing. If I'm teaching a yoga class, it's kind of like if you're teaching a class in school, you have a lesson and you are delivering that lesson. And just like a teacher takes questions from students, I am giving input to students. If I see that they um, need some help or I can give a little feedback, um, but it's this thing that I'm delivering to everybody. And then if you were getting tutoring from someone, you'd work on those things that you needed. You might not necessarily get through the thing you planned, something else might come up. Um, you know, whatever you need in that session, the tutor is gonna give it to you. And that's how I kind of feel about the one-on-one -on -one yoga sessions. Like this is gonna be about specifically what you need. But if you're coming to me because you just wanna do a practice, a flow by yourself, then it's like I'm teaching a class to one person. And that's, again, we're not building that energy with all the other people around, so it's not serving the purpose. So if you come to me and for a private yoga session and I'm kind of like your tutor, okay, what are these things that we're gonna work on? The physical practice is gonna be like a little bit, a little piece of it. And especially now that, you know, I've completed my 500 hour, um, my 500 hour yoga teacher training, so I have, you know, all of the tools in my toolbox, I've completed the um, Ayurvedic, lifestyle coaching certificate, more tools in my toolbox. So I want to give you something that's personal to you and that's not necessarily meaning we're going to flow for 30 or 60 minutes. It's going to be a lot of talking. <laughs> so if you are, say you're working on something that is um, physical, uh, maybe you do have a goal like you want to get a headstand or you want to get an arm balance. Uh, and, and you need some one-on-one -on -one help with that. Like that would be an awesome place for like a 30 minute session where I could give you some feedback on how to get a headstand or how to get this arm balance. But again, you're not gonna get it in that 30 minutes. I'm gonna give you things that you gotta go work on. Maybe you need to work on your arm strength with some strength training movements. Maybe you need to work on your shoulder mobility with some stretches. Um, and then that's what's gonna give you the pieces so that you can have this, this peak pose that you want to achieve in your practice. Another thing that works really great for, say, like a 30-minute session is if you are a paradoxical breather, so uh, I have students that are unfortunately stuck in this pattern where when you inhale, you lift up and you exhale and you push your belly out. So that is a very unhealthy way to breathe, not only physically for your body, but mentally and emotionally. That leads to a lot of stress and anxiety. 
we might need some one-on-one -on -one sessions and 30 minutes would be fine so we could work on retraining your body and your mind to belly breathe that's a great use for that session but again we're going to talk about it for 30 minutes but it's the work that you do at home on your own that's going to lead you to accomplishing this thing you want to get and implementing what I'm telling you into the yoga class that you're showing up for one, two, three times a week. Okay, so that's some, some issues where I could see a, a private yoga class being very beneficial, a private yoga session. So the physical body, though, is only one part of the practice. So again, I think this is where my, uh, my issue, my block comes in, is people are coming to me because they just want that physical practice. And hi, Candy. And that's not what I want to talk about. Again, I want to be your tutor and your coach so I can give you some suggestions that help you on whatever goal you're working on. So let's say you want to be healthier or you want to reduce stress. Um, maybe you have weight loss goals. Maybe this is um, a complement to some other training you're doing. Maybe you're just at a point in your life where you're stressed out. You're always sick. Um, you're finding that the way you have been doing things isn't working. So it's time to implement some new routines. You're looking more at your diet, you're looking at your sleep, um, and you're looking at how yoga can help to support you and do all these things. So some of the things that I would like to talk to you about as your yoga coach, your yoga tutor in a one-on-one -on -one session are going to be like the routines, the daily routines that we learn from Ayurveda. So again, like I said, this yoga practice, if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one yoga with me, we're not gonna be flowing for 60 minutes. It's gonna be a lot of talking and coaching. So we might talk about daily routines that Ayurveda uh, suggests. So things like waking up by 6 a.m., going to bed before 10 p.m., what time you're eating, what foods you're eating, what's right for your type, You know, what's bothering you right now, what foods are best to eat for your type, what time of day is best to eat for you? What type of yoga is best for you? So if you are really stressed out and burnt out right now, stop going to hot vinyasa, right? So I'm going to tell you, go to the yin yoga, go to the restorative yoga. These are the things you need to practice. So guiding you to make those choices all day long, it's not just about that time that we're working together. So other things that I would talk to you about are changes to make with the season. Again, we're in summer right now. Let's not go to hot vinyasa yoga class. Uh, let's cater those vinyasa classes to be more of what we need. Um, if you're, if that is your only option, if your only option is um, a vinyasa class or a power yoga class, like how can you change this? Um, we should talk to people in private so we spend so much talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the great thing, Candy, about when you have a smaller class, you can get into those conversations with people and it really turns into like a small, it turns into like small group yoga, which I think you and I are both really good at that. Um, and we know our people. So when you know your people, you kind of know, you kind of know, you want to drop those things in that make it relevant to them um, or making the practice applicable to everybody. And that's really beneficial when we have those small classes. Uh, so, okay, talking about daily routines, seasonal routines, and then other things I would talk to you about are the, the things that are bothering you. Like, what is your what is your goal? You know, are you having low back pain? Well, then I might talk to you about uh, the different doshas. So maybe you have this imbalance in one of your doshas that's contributing to your low back pain, and I'm going to give you some pose recommendations, some breathing recommendations, uh, meditations, essential oils, all these things that can help you with what is happening with your low back pain. Again, let's say you're just tired, you're feeling drained, you don't have any energy. I'm going to give you suggestions of uh, not only poses, but all the other things that can help support you. And what's really cool is that, again, these are things that you can do on your own, or you can begin to work these into the things that you're already doing. So like if I'm teaching a class and I give people the option to float through a vinyasa or to hang out in child's pose, how do you know which one that you're supposed to be uh, picking that day. Well, if we've had this conversation and you are exhausted and overworked, okay, you need to pick that child's pose every time. So you'll know how to cater those classes so that you're still absorbing that energy of the group. You're getting your yoga practice, but you're catering it for what your specific needs are um, at this season in your life. So other things that I would like to talk to you about are if you are having a, um, issues with your digestion, or really if you're having any issues going on, one of the things we can do is to strengthen your digestion. So foods you can eat, uh, 
what type of um, tea you can drink, what type of poses help to stimulate the digestive system, what foods to choose, um, all of these things, what kind of breathing practices. So when you hear an, something that's offered in a class or you know that you, you like this particular breathing technique or you wanna know what you can do on your own for five minutes a day, I can give you a suggestion. Other things that I would like to talk to you about in a private yoga session are the gunas. So the gunas are sattva, raja, and tamas. And these are different than the doshas. So the doshas are kind of your mental and your physical composition, and the gunas are like your, your spirit. They're a little bit higher. So rajas is activity, tamas is inertia, and sattva is, is like enlightenment. We want to get out of tamas, inertia. We pass through rajas, activity, to reach sattva, to reach enlightenment, right? Isn't that the goal? And there are ways that we can do that. So and if you don't like the word enlightenment, it can just be, you know, whatever makes sense to you. It's like a goodness, it's harmony, it's balance, it's, it's light, it's love, it's what, whatever positive word resonates with you. But, you know, we're all, we're all moving in that direction. Like, that's what nature does. It ascends, it lifts up, it grows, it expands. We're all moving in that direction. So that's in our yoga practice, that's where we want to go. So how can we do that? One of the ways we can do that is with the... Um, yamas and the niyamas. So this is a way that we can take our practice off of the mat. So I might be talking to you about how you're incorporating non-harming, uh, truthfulness, cleanliness, non-stealing, non-coveting, um, concentration, or no, not, not, not concentration, cleanliness, contentment, self-discipline, self-study, surrender, how you're incorporating these aspects into your life off of the mat so that it's not just all about your body. You know, we get stuck in that uh, first layer, that first kosha of the physical body, and understandably so, you know, this is the realm that we live in. We live in a very physical world. And some people, they may not be. Uh, you know, I think about people who are, maybe they're really spiritual or they're super intellectual and they're smart, but they're incredibly unhealthy physically, maybe they're overweight. So they are living in this other realm and they need to bring in a little bit more physical, but for most of us, we're existing in this physical place and our yoga practice is helping us to get through those other layers. And with the yamas and the niyamas, that is one of the ways that we can take our practice off of the mat. Those things, we may be able to represent them and talk about them on the mat, but they really happen outside of our yoga practice. So speaking of the koshas, the layers, again, if you are really stuck in that physical layer, and maybe overly so, maybe you overly identify with your body, how it looks, what it can do, uh, you may need to get a better understanding of yogic philosophy and the other layers that make up your being. So again, this would be a conversation where we would talk about um, the pranamaya kosha, so getting down into the subtle body and connecting to your energy, how pranayama helps to connect to energy, the breathing practices, what breathing practices are right for you, and again, the season, the time of life that you're in, and whatever um, elements that you're working on at this time. And then digging down deeper into the koshas, you have two koshas of the mind, and this is the place where you get your samskaras. These are like the ruts and the habits that you're trying to break. So we can break through those with meditation, concentration practices. Again, this may be something that you are incorporating into your existing yoga practice or you're building a routine that you are going to practice on your own. And of course, digging down to the deepest layer, um, the Anandamaya Kosha, your bliss body. So, you know, what does that mean for you? What, what makes you happy? Where do you feel connected? And how can we help get you out of that place where you're just overly connected with the physical body so that you can find some true joy and true bliss and true happiness? And then the only other thing that I will say about that is, again, if you are looking to dig deeper into your yoga practice, this is where a private yoga session could be helpful. If you are thinking, well, I'm afraid that I'm gonna do it wrong. You're not gonna do it wrong. You know, I can talk you through the, the poses and through the practice in a yoga class where you can be supported by the energy of the group. So don't be intimidated to come to a class, and any class, my class or anybody's, and don't be intimidated to say, hey, it's my first class. You know what, and if you don't have a good experience, find another instructor, find another type of yoga. 
all yoga types are different, every instructor is different, so you're going to find somebody that you click with. And then if you're ready to, you know, drill down into those deeper layers of your practice, you want to add more to the classes that you're taking or you want to build your own personal yoga practice, this is where I think a private yoga session is most benef beneficial. And I don't think it's something that we do every week. I think it's something that you do it as you need it. Um, maybe it's like a quarterly check-in, um, a monthly check-in, um, as needed, when you have questions. Again, I want to act like your yoga coach or your yoga tutor where I'm helping you, but the classes or your own private personal practice are still the, the meat, the meat of your practice, the Brussels sprouts, as I like to say. So if this is something that you have questions about, I would love if you would post them here so I could tell you more about any of the stuff that I talked about here. Um, or if you need some words of encouragement to, to get in there to try your first yoga class or to try a different type of yoga class, um, I do believe yoga is for everybody. There are different types of yoga. So it's finding the style that's, that's best for you, finding the instructor that works best for you. And I love talking about this stuff. So whatever questions you have, please post them here. Um, and if you want, if this has kind of sparked your interest, like you want to hear more about these things, the gunas, the doshas, yeah, the Brussels sprouts, the gunas, the doshas, um, how to become more sattvic, to feel more of that light, love, and joy, and how these this pr yoga practice you love can come to life off of your mat, that's something that I would love to talk to you about in a private session. Um, again, not using the private session just to go through the same flow that we could do in a class together, but really going down a little deeper and helping you with what it is that you need help with. And maybe you don't know what that is. Maybe you just know like, hey, I'm tired all the time, or I'm not feeling fulfilled, or I'm you know frustrated in my relationships, or I'm not motivated to go to work. These things can help. All of these things can help. And I would love to give you the tools so that you can change your habits and change your life and reach for those things that you want, the fulfillment, the happiness, the joy, the success, all of the things. And this is the way to do it. This is the way to get there. So if you have questions, post them here. And I will talk to you again next week. Thanks, guys.